Hey tires, Darren here back with another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying a streamer from Polly Ross Burrow, who's probably best known for his fuzzy nymphs. Uh, this is actually one of the streamers he developed and this is considered to be his signature pattern or his trademark pattern and it's called the Polly's Pride. So Polly worked as a commercial fly tire and a trapper with uh, partner Dick Winter for some time. And they self, he self-published a book called Tying and Fishing the Fuzzy Nymphs back in 1965. It's been reissued a couple times, and it's a wonderful book to have in your library. Polly lived beside the Williamson River in Oregon, just behind a tackle shop. And he developed about 60 different patterns, and those include different streamers, bucktails, nymphs, wets, and dries. One thing to note, he was a left-handed tire, and... Being as such, it's easier to identify the flies that he's tied. They've got a little bit different look to them than what you're used to. Anyways, let's have a look at the materials for the pattern and get started. Get a fresh hook in the vise. Today I'm using a Mustad Signature L87. This is the size 4 and this is the signature replacement for the 3665A streamer hook. I'm using a black 6 uni unithread. And we're just going to start by putting on a little bit of thread near the head and we're going to start winding back. I'm going to take that to the bend of the hook and then come back a little bit and tie that tail. So for this I'm going to use a bit of red hen hackle. This is a little bit softer than the rooster hackle and I'm just going to take about an inch or so worth of hackle off one side we'll kind of compress that together and we'll measure that so that's a little bit longer than the hook gape off the end of the fly Now we'll wrap that down. Just to the hook point. We'll go back a little bit further later. Next we're going to tie in a rib. And for that we're going to use a silver mylar tinsel, a flat mylar. And for this I'm going to tie this gold side facing up. And just along the side, you just want to make sure it gets pushed down. Secure it along the length of the hook shank. Just going to wrap that back. Make sure we got all those thread wraps covered. So the recipe for the original calls for a fluorescent red lamb's wool. That's not something I have easily available, so I'm going to substitute with a either red laser dub or the SDS trilobal. Um, I kind of like working with the laser dub a little bit more, but uh, the STS to me it looks a little bit more. It's got a little bit more of the texture of the lamb's wool. I believe, um, and a bit shorter fiber. Um, I think we're gonna go with laser dub here. Just I like using that product a little bit more than the trilobal. So we're gonna take a small bunch of this. I'm just gonna pull these fibers so that they kind of line up a little bit. 
nicer. And we'll thread on a dubbing noodle, fairly thin. And I'm just going to wrap that forward. I'm going to leave a little room at the head. And I'm going to start tapering back. Put on another noodle here. And on this one, I want to make sure I hit the back of the hook. And probably one more will do it. I just want this to be a touch tapered. I'm going to put a little bit more dubbing on the front there. All right, then we're going to take our rib. We're going to wind that forward in open turns. Catch that at the end of the dubbing. Then I'm just going to pull that tag end over top just to make sure it's locked in place before I trim it. All right, next I'm going to take a rooster hackle, a red one. Just trim up a little bit of that. I'm going to pull these fibers back. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. I'll give it a few wraps. Pull the tip back just to make sure that it's locked in. And I'm going to run my scissors up the inside. I'm going to push those fibers back. Basically doubling them over. And then I'm going to take about four or five wraps with this hackle. And I should mention the concave or the dull side is tied towards the back. It's probably good. Tie that off. We'll fold the hackle back just so we lock it. Lock the stem down. Trim that off. Next we're just gonna kind of separate this hackle, I'm going to pull it down and then we're just going to take a couple wraps as we're holding it down and that should more or less put everything to the bottom. If you got one or two stray fibers you can give them a the scissor treatment. Alright, next we're going to take a nice piece of white marabou. Got a nice blood quill here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip off some of the fibers from the bottom of this. I'm going to take from both sides. I'm going to take about an inch or so off one side, tie it in, and I'm going to do the other. Just want to match that around the tail. And then we'll do the other side. Save that for um, an Alaska boot or a 
soft hackle streamer perfect and we'll tie that down and we'll come in here and trim this at an angle We'll give that a few cleanup wraps. So last, we're going to take a little bit of black ostrich hurl. That's something that Polly was well known for using on his fuzzy nymphs, but he's also used it on his signature pattern here. So I'm just going to take those and make sure to line up the tips. I've got about six hurls here. And we're going to tie those straight on top, same length as the wing. You just want to make sure that you've got those right in the middle there. And we'll trim those off. And then we're just going to clean the head up a little bit. Now it's okay if you have a little bit of a larger head because we're going to paint some eyes on this and you want a little bit of a canvas to work on. So we'll add a whip finish and then we'll come and paint some eyes. Now I normally do this in stages. I would add a coat of head cement here and let that fully dry. And then I'm going to take a little bit of acrylic paint and make sure you Give it a good shake beforehand. This is just uh, an acrylic paint, uh, I guess like an outdoor craft paint. Nothing special. And I've also taken a toothpick and I've just cut it in the middle and then cut it on the tip a little bit just so I've got two different diameters. And if you're doing a number of these flies, it's probably best if you do this stage all at the same time, just for consistency. So we just dip the fat end of this uh, toothpick in the white paint and then we'll give it a couple dabs just to make sure it's got good coverage. And we'll wipe off the excess paint before we move on to the black here. And you really don't need much paint. You just need enough for small people. So I usually just dab it out of the cap you just want to get it right in the middle and there you go Thanks for stopping by my fly tying channel and watching my tutorials. If you're new here and like this sort of thing, why not hit that subscribe button? I'd love to hear from you, so if you have anything to say, leave it in the comments below. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers. Mm -hmm.